We'd like to take a moment to thank our listeners sincerely for your support of Honest News Network Ministry. If you're interested in supporting this ministry, please use the information provided. Thank you. Each prayer I pray, each step I take, I I've never seen such a fight of resistance, folks, that I have seen in the last, really just in the last few weeks. It's like every single time I go to record a message, everything goes wrong. And this is supposed to be supposedly cutting technology here, cutting-edge technology. Apple, a Mac. I mean, I'm trying to have the best equipment I can to have to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, and uh, it's, it's unreal. It is unreal how difficult it is just to share the simple gospel of Jesus Christ. That's how much Satan hates the gospel. That he actually is doing everything he can to resist it. But as I've shared with you in the past, he may resist, put up a fight, and even hinder but he can't stop the gospel. Amen, folks. He cannot stop the gospel of Jesus Christ. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in this world. Amen. Satan is the god of this world. He's the prince of darkness. Whew. Praise God. Keep us in your prayers. We need to get the gospel out. Luke chapter 6, beginning with verse 46. <clears throat> Luke chapter 6, verse, beginning with verse 46. And why call ye me Lord? Why are you calling me Lord? There's a lot of folks today calling Jesus Christ Lord. Why do they call him Lord? They're not doing what he said to do. Why do you call me Lord? And you don't do the things which I say. What's your purpose in calling me Lord? Why would somebody call Jesus Christ Lord and he's not Lord of their lives? Hmm? Supposing that by calling him Lord that, that somehow that's going to keep them from going to hell? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house and digged deep. And laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, and the stream beat vehemently upon that house, and could not shake it. And that word shake in the original Greek means to disturb. 
couldn't even disturb it. For it was founded upon a rock. Are you listening, people? It was founded upon a rock. The scripture says he built a house. It says he laid the foundation on a rock. He did, it doesn't say he, his foundation was the rock. It says he laid his foundation on a rock. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for giving us understanding, for giving us truth. Lord, for giving us insight into your word, understanding of your word, so that we might teach, instruct your people in the way of righteousness, Lord. Because, Lord, if we don't have understanding, what are we teaching? We appreciate, Lord, the understanding you've given us. We ask that you bless and that you anoint, Lord, and that this message of the gospel will prevail and it will reach your people. It'll, that the gospel will meet its mark. It'll find its mark. We know, Lord, the devil is trying to hinder the gospel, but we know that you're greater. We know, Lord, you can't fail. We ask that you help us, Lord, to believe you, to take you at your word, to leave it in your hands. We give you all the praise and the glory in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Praise God. We're going to have to pray. That's what God's teaching me. This idea that we're just going to turn the computer on and be able to just preach the gospel and everything's just going to go smoothly? Well, I think it will if we pray. But we can't just take it for granted. It's just going to go forward and the devil's not going to do anything to try to throw a wrench in the operation. He's going to try to stop the truth. He doesn't care. Listen, I'm going to tell you folks, he doesn't care about these mega churches. He's already got them, and he's deceiving multitudes with them. What he's, what he's really focusing on, the Bible says, he stands before the woman, but he's not even trying to devour the woman, the church. He's after what the church is producing. And how many know what the church is producing is not just this man-child, but it is truth that is in the man-child that is being shared by the man-child, the overcomer. Amen? The first word I'd like us to look at here in Luke chapter 6, verse 48, is this word digged. I felt like the Holy Ghost was challenging my spirit to challenge his people's spirit or to challenge your, your hearts. I don't think we dig deep enough. I think we don't dig further, uh, far, far enough. I think we need to continue to dig. We need to dig even deeper. And what is it we're digging for? The scripture says he laid his foundation on a rock. So that tells me he's digging down to find the rock. Amen. It's amazing how long it took for the apostles, excluding Judas, but how long it took them to finally understand, even though Peter, Simon Peter, received a revelation that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, it still took them a long time even walking with Jesus for three years, that wasn't enough. 
but it wasn't until after Pentecost that they understood that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the eternal Son of God. And how many know the Old Testament reveals to us that God is the rock? Listen to me. It's not enough that you know Jesus Christ as a man, even as a prophet or an apostle with a capital A, the great apostle, the bishops, the bishop of our soul. You got to know him as Christ, the son of God. Are you listening? Paul, the apostle said, I've laid the foundation. I've already laid the foundation. There is no foundation other than Jesus Christ. It says the wise man, he laid the foundation on a rock. He didn't say the foundation is the rock. He said he laid the foundation on the rock. Let's look at Psalm chapter 62, verse 6. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. Who is this speaking of? Who is my rock? Who is David saying, He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. So when we see in the scripture here, When we see in the scripture, Luke chapter 6, verse 48, he is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. This rock being God. The foundation being Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist. Seems that some back then believed in reincarnation. Some, Elias or Elijah, there it is again, reincarnation, and others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, and this is for you today, this is for us, but whom say ye that I am? That's more important than what others are saying about him. It's more important what you believe. Who cares what everybody else believes? But whom say ye that I am? You better know, because I'm going to tell you right now, the storm is upon us. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ. The son of the living God. Remember, this is the one that later down the road said, I don't even know the man. Denied that he even knew him. But Peter here is saying, thou art the Christ. The son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed 
art thou Simon Barjona? For flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee. But my Father which is in heaven. You didn't know that by yourself. Are you listening, folks? You can't know it by yourself. It must be revealed to you by the Father that Jesus Christ is the eternal Son of God. He is the Christ. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I believe that's why the gates of hell are prevailing against some believers today. Not the church as a whole, but some believers Satan is prevailing against. Because they don't really believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. They haven't received that revelation yet. That he is the only foundation. All else is sinking sand. Are you listening, people? Jesus said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against his church that is built on the rock. Now, Jesus wasn't saying Peter was the rock. He was referring to what the Old Testament scriptures have to say. God is my rock. Upon this rock, what's the rock? The revelation that he received that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. That was the revelation. That was what Jesus re was referring to as being the rock. You want to be unshakable in the storm? You want to be an overcomer in this hour? You better know that Jesus Christ is indeed the son of the living God. You must know that he is deity. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Otherwise, you're in that same boat of those that are antichrist. Did you know it, that's what separates those that are for Christ and those that are against Christ is those that believe that Jesus Christ is God? Hmm? Amen. 1 John chapter 4, verse 14. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. The Father in heaven sent His Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, not just the Son of Man, not just a man, whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. Are you listening, people? And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God. And God in him. John chapter 16 verse 33. These things are... I have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. Mark it down. You're not exempt from tribulation. I want to say that again. Mark it down. You are not exempt from tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Be of good cheer. Jesus is saying this to you and I today. I have overcome the world.
First John chapter five, verse four. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth, and that E-T-H on the end of that word means continues. No matter what you believed yesterday, do you still believe? But he that believeth continues to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Who overcometh the world? Who continues to overcome the world? While the church today is becoming lukewarm and we have those that are among us that are going out from us that are no doubt were never of us because they are showing their true fruits. And I told you they're not just going out from us, they're becoming antichrist. They're against Christ. Can you imagine that? You once knew the truth you leave the truth, and now you're fighting against the truth. I don't believe that way anymore, Brother Joseph. I used to believe that way. God forbid. The serpent is working today. Half God said. You used to believe. You used to believe that way. You used to believe that way. What changed? God didn't change. His word didn't change. Hath God said? Are you listening, people? I want you to know Solomon saw a serpent on the rock. And he said, there's some things that are just too wonderful for me. A serpent on the rock. Usually serpents are under the rock. And he saw a serpent on a rock. On a wall, on a rock wall. Satan is on the rock today. How is he on the rock? He's trying to change the truth. He's trying to manipulate the word of God. How many know that the wall of truth today, the wall of fire that's supposed to be round about God's people, is being breached? There's a breach today in the wall of truth. The devil is getting into the church. Hath God said? Hath God said? If God said it, yes, he said it. Are you going to stick to what you believe? Are you going to hold to the truth? Are you going to fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life? Are you going to fight, brothers and sisters? This is the time to fight the good fight of faith, not fight people, not fight one another, not fight against the truth, but fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. We must believe and continue to believe that Jesus Christ is indeed the Christ, the son of the living God. If we're going to overcome the world. Are you listening? Jesus overcame the world. And he said, you and I can overcome the world. If we will believe. If we'll fight the good fight of faith. Praise the Lord. It's a good fight, people. It's nothing worth fighting for like faith in Jesus Christ. Faith. It's nothing greater then believing in Jesus, believing the truth. Are you listening? I see folks that get in and they think because they got in, they ain't got to do anything now. But the Bible says they to endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Doesn't mean just because you got saved, you're going to be saved and going to go to heaven. You got to endure to the end. You got to Fight the good fight of faith. You've got to endure and overcome. 
the world. Overcome Satan, the prince of darkness, the god of this world. You've got to overcome the flesh. Carnality. I'm going to tell you people, not everybody's going to sit with Jesus Christ in his throne. You're deceived if you think everybody is. He said to him that overcometh. To him that continues to overcome. Remember, Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. It wasn't long before he was saying, I don't know the man. Begin to curse and swear. It wasn't a soldier or a warrior or some brutal dictator that was standing before Peter. It was a little young damsel. A little child. Aren't you one of his? Didn't I see you with him? Quiet. Quiet there. I wonder if he would have done something more if it wasn't by the grace of God to quiet the girl down. Hmm? fighting for his life, seeking to save his life. Anybody listening? There's a lot of folks today doing a lot of things to cover up the truth. Hey, man, look what David did. Look what David did. Huh? Had a man killed to cover up his sin. David, a man after God's own heart, conspired against one of God's own people, one of his great warriors, a man with more integrity than David at the time, set Uriah in the hottest part of the battle and then just retire from him. Dear God. What man would say something or, or send a letter in the hand of the very one that he's conspiring against? Did you know Uriah carried the very letter? The Bible says the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. How many ministers today are carrying the letter of God's word and not the anointed word of God? And they're killing folks instead of giving them life. Uriah was carrying the very letter. What would have happened if Uriah would have opened that letter? Dear God, can you imagine the shock? I want you to make sure Uriah doesn't come back from the battle. What? Can you imagine, people? Can you imagine David was brought to the place? Because he was trying to cover up his sin? God knew about it. How I many you know it took a while before David admitted it? Amen. When Nathan the prophet came to him, said, Thou art the man. David had already passed judgment on the one that Nathan was speaking of. If you know the story, brothers and sisters, it's late in the hour. I'm not going into it right now. I hope you know the truth. I hope you know. I hope you've been studying God's word. Thou art the man, David. You found me out. God knew all along. Look how long it took David to admit it, to confess to it. Anybody listening? I've been watching a few videos lately. Piers Morgan's going to these prisons and meeting these people that have been 
convicted of uh, just atrocities, convicted of serial killings. And he's trying to get some closure for the families by getting them to confess and it maybe say that they're sorry or something to get the some of these people are tormented so bad that <clears throat> one mother doesn't even hasn't even changed her daughter's room. She never came home to sleep in her own bed and it's been the way same way for years while that man's rotting in prison. Are you listening? But these guys won't even admit it. And then there's one, one individual that when he first got caught, he admitted all that he did. But now he's going back on it. And these people don't feel like they fully got closure because now he's going back on it. Instead of, instead of believing what he said when it was in the heat of the moment when he first got caught. But people are looking for closure today. They're looking for justice. Anybody listening? But they won't confess. They won't admit what they've done. Some of these, some of these guys take it to the grave with them. They take it into hell with them. Because they're trying to cover it up. God already knows about it. And he's the only one that can help you. And I've got good news for you. He didn't come to condemn you. Jesus didn't come into this world to condemn you. He came that you might be saved, that you might have life. Praise God. Can you imagine? Who had heard such a thing? That Jesus Christ came to save? He came to forgive? Not to condemn you? How long are you going to cover it up? How long are you going to conceal what you've done? God already knows about it. And he didn't, he didn't come to condemn. Jesus didn't come to condemn you. God didn't send his son into the world to condemn you. He came into the world to forgive you. And all you have to do is confess your sins. Confess what you've done. Praise the Lord. Now, shall we continue in sin that grace should abound? God forbid. There's many today that are involved in lasciviousness. Is the idea that I've got a license to sin because I got saved. No, Jesus came into the world to save us from sin and to make us overcomers. Praise the Lord. To overcome sin, to overcome the flesh, to overcome Satan, to overcome the world. Praise God, even as he overcame. And to sit with him in his throne. Praise God. Hallelujah. Do you believe it? Do you believe the truth today? Are you resisting the truth? Because I'm going to tell you, if you choose to hide your sin and conceal it, if you choose not to confess your sin, you're choosing that over forgiveness. You're choosing that over deliverance. You're choosing that over salvation. Why would someone spend eternity in hell because they're too proud or afraid to admit what they've done. As I already mentioned to you, I've been watching these guys. After slaying many, many of their victims, they will not admit what they've done. Amen, people. How much more? God's people. It took we don't know exactly how long it took, but it took some time for David to admit it. 
It took prophet Nathan coming to him and God's wisdom to get to David's heart. Are you listening? And how many know, because of what David did, war. Amen. War never left his house. Conflict never left his house. Because of what David did. Anybody listening? Nothing will open the door to warring, strife. Why is there fightings among you? Why is there strife among you? Come they not hence of your own lust that war in your members? In James we find this. Ye sinners, friendship with the world is enmity with God. He says they're double-minded. Confess your sins. Be honest. He already knows about them. Oh, I feel his presence right now. Oh, 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 glory to the Lamb, people. Glory, glory, glory to the Lamb. He already knows. He knows all about it. All he's waiting for is you to admit it. Confess it. Confess it. Come clean. Glory to the Lamb. Come clean. Oh, Lord. Glory to God. My little children, sin not. But if you do, you have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, who is faithful and just to forgive us from all our to forgive us of all our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It says in the scripture, he's able to present us faultless before his throne. It's not worth, it's not worth spending eternity in hell because you don't want to confess what you've done. Amen. It would be one thing if you're going to pay a price But he paid the price, so you don't have to. And all you got to do is confess it. Amen? And go and sin no more, lest the worst thing comes upon you. God bless you.